So pathway problems, we're going to look at <coughs> two different ways. <clears throat> you want to get from <clears throat> A to B, passing through C if applicable. A moving point on the pathway must always move closer to the end point, okay? So if you're going from A to B, you can't go like up to, over, and then down. Okay, you always have to be getting closer. So the answers at the bottom of the page are the combinatorics answers, right? Using permutation. And that's just simply counting out. Okay, look, I've got to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to go six blocks. But one, two, three of them are north, and three of them are east. So it's six factorial over three factorial, three factorial. You don't have to write this down. It's on the bottom of the right hand page. Okay. Gives you the combinatorics. I'm going to show you an alternate way to do it. It's the it's the counting way. So you just say, if I'm going along here, I only have one way to get to this junction, this junction, or this junction. If I'm going up, I only have one way to get to any of these guys, right? Which is I just got to keep going up. If I want to get to here, then I've got paths coming. So what you want to look at is every time I go to an intersection here, I want to say, how many ways can I get there from below or from the left? Because I'm always coming up or right. So there are two ways. To get here, it's three. Okay, two from below, one from there. To get here, it's four. To get here, it's three. Okay, because I'm either coming from here or here. Two plus one is three, and three plus one is four. Three plus three is six. Four plus six is ten. Um, here we've got four. Four plus six is ten and twenty. Okay, so that's a counting way. Right? It gives you the same answer as 6 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial. Yes. Okay, here, <coughs> factorial wise, right, again, if you just have a plain block like this, very easy to do using <coughs> permutations, right? I've got to go 2 blocks east and 4 blocks south. So that's just arranging 2 e's and 4 s's, which is 6 letters, so it's 6 factorial over 4 factorial, 2 factorial. Counting like this, we go one. So you go ones along the edges, along the perimeter. Okay, and then we got two, three. One and two is three. Three and three is six. Three and one is four. Four and six is ten. Four and one is five. Five and ten is fifteen. Okay, so you get these fifteen paths going like that. Here to go from A to B, you always got to move closer. There's only one way. Right, because you just have to keep going straight down. So here you're covering one, two, three, four, five blocks, five of which are south, right? So it's five factorial over five factorial over one. So it's just one, 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 right? Because I can't, I can't head away, so I'm not allowed to go out here, right? This is not option, <coughs> not an option. <clears throat> uh, here we have to go through C. So what we can think of doing is breaking this into two blocks. So the factorial notation is, all right, let's just count. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five blocks to get through here. So that's five factorial over two factorial, three factorial. And then I've got one, two, three blocks to go two of which are the same and one of which is the same. You don't really need that one factorial. <coughs> so that's using a <coughs> permutation with repetition idea. Right? Let's get to C and then. So the and is a times, right? Anytime we use the word and, it's times. To do this with counting, I just say, OK, one, one. I don't need to go any further. One, one, one. Two. 3, 2 and 1 is 3, 3 and 1 is 4. There are 10 paths to get from A to C, right? That's about 5 factorial over whatever, whatever, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Now, once to get here, there are 10 paths, right? Just the number from here. And to get here, instead of carrying 1s down like we did over here, we carry the 10 down, right? Because if you're just going straight down, you only have those 10 ways to get here. Then you're going like this. Then to get here is 20, because 10 and 10, and to get down to A becomes 30. Okay? And that's the same answer you'll get out of this. It better be. 
Um, here, okay, again, you can look at the factorial notation way. Okay, I'm not going to go through that. The factorial no notation answer is written. I'll just run you through here. So we've got 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 and 1 is 2, so to get to this junction. This is 3. Um, I hate when it goes the opposite way. This is 3 here, right? Because you can come from above one way and two. This is six, six paths to get there. Then these sixes just propagate, right? Along here and down. Okay, so when you reach C, as you say, C is it's six paths to get to C, you just propagate those sixes out along here and down here. So six, six sorry. C. Block C. Can there be a six? It's six right here. Well, it's, it's, it's to this dot, so that's what that 6 is. Maybe I've written it in a bad place. Um, to get here, so 6 and 6 is 12, 12 and 6 is 18, 6 and 12 is 18, uh, 6 and 18 is 24, 18 and 18 is 36, and 36 and 24 is some number, 40, 60. It's actually match up with the answers. Number five is sixty. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, and they're showing you the combinatorics notation. I, I hate, I'm used to going the other way. I hate going the other way. <coughs> a to A to B through C. You only have one path, right? You got to go straight across to C. And now we're just interested in this block. So one, one. This is two, one along here. So the, from C, the numbers propagate. To the right and down, and then one and one is two, two and one is three. Okay. And you could list those, right? You could draw them, right? Here's one way, it's going like this. Here's another way, it's going like this, and here's the third way. So with three paths, it's pretty easy to actually draw those three paths up. So here, um, imagine it's a, a road network or something and you've got like a bridge here and a bridge here so you have to go over those bridges I have to work my way to here go over that bridge and then to here okay so each block would be this would be four factorial over two factorial two factorial this would be two five factorial over two factorial three factorial and this would be three factorial over two factorial which is all at the bottom right and they're all multiplied together and this way it's one 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 two three three, six, so the sixes propagate along and down, 12, 18, 18, 36, 24, 60, and then the 60s propagate, okay, and then so to here, 120, and to here, 180. And it's not like you will not get a ton of pathway problems on that. And if they're nice blocks, and these are all nice blocks, so the combinatorics is a much easier way to do it, really. But when you've got that C restriction, you know, we could just say you got to go to here, and then after that's one, two, three, right? So it's three factorial over two factorial, which is just three. Challenging question. Ah, so this is a little bit different. It's it's tougher. You can go from the mall to B, so she's got to go through here. So we could do that with combinatorics, right? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, which is uh, what? 5, 10, I think. Using the numbers 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 6, 4, 2, 10, excuse me. So to get here, now the only way that I can get to this point is from here. I cannot come this way, right? Because I had to go through the hotel. So that means there's 10 ways to get here. Um, to get here, 10 ways. Again, I can only come from above there. So then we've got 20. Now these two guys, so to get here, I'm coming from here or here, so that's 30. And to get here, 30. And to get here, this is a 20 again. It has to come across. Because the only way you're getting here is from here, right? There's no other paths leading in there. So it's only from the left. 20 and 30 is 50, and then we get 80. 
So 80 different <coughs> routes to the airport. Okay, and that's just a, a slight variation on one. It's no longer uh, the blocks. Total number of paths the ball can take to reach the bottom. So the ball has to come here, right? It's going to hit. And so it's got one way to get here and one way to get here. And actually going along the edges, it only has one way. Right? The only way it gets to slot five is every time it hits, it goes to the right. The only way it gets to slot one is every time it hits, it goes to the right. To get to this slot, how many ways are there? So there's two. To get here, to get here, three, right? And then here is one again. I think it's the one along more down. Levels there. One, 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 two, one, three. Okay, to get here, there'll be four. So one path to get here, six. To get here, four. And here, one. So the total number of paths, one plus four plus six plus four plus one. Five, ten, sixteen. Okay, so sixteen possible paths for that ball to reach the bottom. Okay, where's it most likely going to come out? Slot three, right? Six out of those 16 times. Okay, so if we're doing probability, you got a one in 16 chance of coming out of this slot, one in 16 here, four in 16, which is two out of eight, six out of 16, which is three out of eight, two out of eight. Okay. How many ways could the black tractor piece move to the other side if it was always moved forward and stay on the white square? So. If all it does is move left, 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 there's only one way, right? It has to go down. And the same thing to the right. And then see if you can fill in the rest. Okay. Not that hard. How many ways to get here? Two. OK. And then you should be able to kind of fill in the rest, right? Right. All you're doing is looking at the two white squares, or the one or two white squares that feed into the square that you're doing. So what's feeding into this square, right? Yeah. Okay, so how many ways can it make it there? You'd add these all up. We've got 69, 89, 93, 103 ways, right? 103. Go back here and say 16 ways. Okay, and then there's your answers, right? Combinatorial notation and uh, just answers. All right, combinations. A combination is a selection of all or some of the members of a set without regard for order. What do we call those locks on your locker? Combination lock. Does the order you put the numbers in matter? What What do we call it when the order matters? <coughs> A permutation. So they're really permutation locks, right? If it was a combination lock, it wouldn't care what order you put the stuff in. Right? So when don't we care about order? Well, you deal me some cards. Do I care what order the cards come in? No, you deal me five cards, they're all face down, I pick them up and I arrange them depending on the game we're playing in whatever way I like. Okay? So we don't care what order they came in. Uh, four students have all put their names on a piece of paper for a draw. The first name draw wins a $5 gift card for a local coffee shop. That's like barely a coffee. The second name drawn wins a movie pass for Cheap Tuesdays at the theater. They still have Cheap Tuesdays? Yeah. Oh, okay. The third prize wins any app they want for their smartphone. There are some expensive apps out there. The number of different ways the four students can win the prizes is given by. So does the order matter? Yeah, they're different prizes, right? So if prizes are different, this is what you've got to start asking yourself now, especially more so tomorrow with the review is, when I'm looking at this situation, does it matter what order the names are drawn or whatever? In this case, yeah. So what is it? 
4P4, which is 4 factorial or 24, right? So there are 24 ways. If the students are Alex, Banji, Carol, and Deneen, then part of the sample space is shown below. So with ABC waiting, it could be ABC, ACB, BCA, BAC, CAB, and CBA. With groups with ACD winning are ACD, ADC, okay, so now you want to list the rest. And I would say be systematic about it, and I don't like the way these two are. I like to be more alphabetical, right? So like, okay, these are all the ones to start with an A, so now I'm going to do the ones that start with a C, right? So I'll go C, A, D, and then I'll go C, D, A, and then I'll do all the ones that start with a D. Okay, and then I'll <coughs> go through the rest, right? So I've got two starting with a B, and I'll have two starting with a C, and two starting with a D, two starting with an A. So these are our 24 ways, right? The three, the four prizes could be given. Oh, wait a second, was it the first day? How many prizes do we have? Three? It's four P3. Let's just spill 24. Four students can win three prizes. My bad. So it's 4P3, but there's still 24 ways. And here's the list of all 24 of them, right? <coughs> Suppose that instead of three different prizes, the three prizes are all exactly the same. Would the group ABC be any different than ACB, BCA, BAC, CAB, or CBA? So does it matter? If they're all the prizes are all the same, does it matter what order we hand them out in? No. Why doesn't it matter? Prizes are all the same, the order doesn't matter. Prizes are the same, the order doesn't matter. This sample space reduces from 24 groups down to how many? Now how many groups do we have? Four groups, right? There's only four groups now. <coughs> Since any ordering of three people is no longer relevant, doesn't matter if it's ABC or ACB or BCA or BAC or CAB or CBA. So when the prizes are all the same, and there are how many ways of ordering these three people? So these three people, we know we can write them in three factorial ways, right? You've got three choices for the first, then two, then one. What if the draw is expanded to include 10 students, but with three exactly the same prizes, how many different groups of three people could win the prizes? So we've got 10, we want 3, but we need to take out the order that those three people are in, right? So we've got 10 P3, but 10 P3 has them in a particular order, right? A, B, C is different from A, C, B. So we divide by 3 factorial to take out those orders, right? We've, we've arranged three objects, so we just divide by 3 factorial to say, yeah, we don't care whether it's A, B, C, or A, C, B, or whatever, right? We divide that out. Groups of objects where the order in which the objects were selected for the group is not important are called combinations. The number of combinations of n objects, that's the total set, n is the total set, taken r at a time. r can be anywhere from zero objects up to n objects, right? Like I could choose no objects from the set. How many ways do I do that? One way, just don't pick anything. 
a uh, number of ways. So we saw there was NPR over R factorial, right? Just to take out the order, which is N factorial over N minus R factorial divided by R factorial. <coughs> which is this, n factorial over n minus r factorial, r factorial. This is the formula for combination. The notation is ncr. So you've seen that in your calculator, right? Because you're not blind. It's like we, we do the factorial thing, and then we did npr. And in between there was this ncr. So now we know what that is, ncr. And sometimes it's denoted like this. So set of parentheses, you know, stretch the... Uh, vertically with a number on top, no line in between. Don't write that, okay? So it's just, when you see those parentheses like that, you just read that as N choose R. It's okay, it happens. Okay. What it applies, get to the next level or something? Yeah. Okay, so it's N factorial over N minus R factorial. Wait, that's the permutation formula, divide by r factorial to take out the order, right? Because we don't care about the order, right? Sometimes order matters, sometimes order doesn't matter. Whenever you're doing any of these questions, you have to ask yourself, does order matter? Okay, if it does, it's a permutation, P. If it doesn't, it's a combination, C, or brackets like that. Um, N and R belong to the set <coughs> of <coughs> whole numbers, okay, because you can have zero, right? We define zero factorial, <coughs> and N is greater than or equal to R. You cannot choose three items from a set of two items, right? So you, you can't do uh, two choose three. I can't choose three items from a set of two, right? It's impossible. I don't have enough items. All right, examples. Five people are chosen from eight male and six female applicants to represent the school at a climate conference. Determine the number of different groups can be selected if there are no restrictions. Does the order matter? No, right? We're just choosing people saying, you know, we're going to put you on a bus, you're going to go to the conference. So if there are no restrictions, what's the, uh, what's the setup? So how many people are there from which to choose? Eight times six. So I got eight males and six females. How many people is that? Fourteen. How many of them do I want? So it's fourteen. Choose five. Which is two thousand and two. Or it's fourteen. Choose five. Okay. So again, you may see either notation, right? The bracket notation or the MCR. What if there must be two men and three women? So how many men do I have to choose from? Eight. How many of them do I need? How many women? And what do I do with and? Multiply. How many women are there to choose from? How many of them do I need? <clears throat> when I do stuff like this, I always like to, if I write it like this, I like to say, what do the first numbers add to? Down to 14, right? So I've covered off everybody that could be chosen, right? Because I've got 14. What do the second numbers add to? Five. Those are the five people I'm choosing, right? So the first two numbers, or the top two numbers, in this notation, right? Top two numbers, 14. Bottom two numbers, five. Okay? What if there are only women in the group? Six C five or six choose five. I don't know. Like we do the same thing in thirty dash two. I I prefer the bracket notation. I'm not sure what they. Uh... Now you can say how many men are there? How many do we want? None. What's top add to? Fourteen. Bottom to five. Now you don't need this eight choose zero, right? Eight two zero is just one. <coughs> Okay. I sometimes like to throw it in just because that way I said I've, I've accounted for all 14 people and I've accounted for the five that I'm getting. Reality, we really just need to say six choose five, which is what? Six. 
Oh, we never worked this out. 8 choose 2 is what? 28 times. Eh, what's 6 choose 3? 6 times 5 times 4 or 3? 20? 0, 6, 5. Somebody check it out or I'll check it. I, got I could just look on here. Yeah, 5, 6, D, and 6. What if there are only men in the group? How many ways can we do it? There's only men. Okay, 8, C, 5. Now, you could write times 6, C, 0, right? If you wanted to. You would never see, I don't think you'd see that on the diploma if they, so <coughs> answers could be in combinatorics notation, this or this. They could be the number, right, 560. And they could be something else, I don't know what, but, you know, I mean, I, I think as distractors, they give you stuff like 8P2 times 6P3, and maybe give you a C and a P and a P and a C, okay, but. So 8C5, which is what? 8 times 7 times 6 over 6, get rid of 56. <coughs> Did too much of this in high school, so when we didn't have calculators. Uh, what if there must be at least three men? So how many men are there if there are at least three men? There are three, four, Four or five. So what I want you to think of when you see that, it says at least three men. I want you to enumerate it. I want you to say there are three men or four men or five men. Now, what does or in math mean? <coughs> it's plus, right? So how do we get three men? Well, eight, choose three. I'm going to the bracket notation. It's a little more compact. So 8 choose 3. If I choose 3 men, how many women must I choose? 2, because I need 5 people, right? Or plus 8 choose 4. I've got 4 men. And then how many women? 1. Or I've got 5 men. And how many women? None. You don't need the 6 choose 0. I like it. It just sort of completes the thing. Right, because it now looks nice, right? I got the eight and the three. This notation is a lot nicer than doing this, because this would string way out further, right? So this is a more compact notation. Okay, and that works out to some number which I will give you. 1,316. In the calculator, you would go 8NCR3 times 6 NCR2 plus 8 NCR4 times, now if you've got a slight bit going on up here, you'll say 6 choose 1 is 6. You know, 8, 8, 8, 8 C4 you might not know offhand, right? But 6 C1 you should know. Okay, 6 C0 you should know. Like, first of all, you, should, you probably wouldn't even be writing that, but, okay. So you go 8 NCR3 times 6 <coughs> NCR2 plus 8 NCR4 times 6 plus 8 NCR5. <coughs> okay, so it's going to be, you know, it's a bit of work to get it, but. Must be at least one woman, one woman. How many women will there be if there's at least one? One or two or three or four. Okay, that means we got to do this. So instead of doing this, what do we think? Can I just do the regular one minus the number of the number? Yeah. What if we just do 14 choose 5, so we take the no restrictions minus the ones that are what? All men. All men, right, which is 8C5. <coughs> so we take all of the possible committees, subtract off the ones that are all men, what's left? At least one woman, right? One or two or three or four or five, and we don't have to do all those separate calculations, right? And we've actually already done these, so we can just pull the numbers down and go 2002 minus 56, which is some number, 1946. Okay. <coughs> Uhura, one of the female applicants, must be in the group. 
So how many Uhuras are we assuming there are? There's one. And how many of them do we need? Does it matter what order in which we choose this one person? No. So one C1. You could also do it as a one P1, right? It wouldn't make any difference. Just still one. So one C1, that's Uhura, times how many people are left from which to choose? Or from whom to choose? <coughs> how many people are left in the group? Thirteen. How many of them do we need? Four. Okay, so there's nothing else. There's, there's no other restriction, right? It's not Uhura and then two other women and then whatever the rest of men, right? It's just Uhura, she's got to be on it. Okay, and then. <coughs> and then there are 13 people remaining because one person is gone. What do these two numbers add to? What do these two numbers add to? Five, right? So if you've got that going on, things are looking good. Kirk and Spock, two of the male applicants, cannot both be in the group. Okay, so what are the scenarios if they can't both be in the group? One of them is, so Kirk is and Spock isn't. Or, Spock is and Kirk isn't, or neither Kirk nor Spock is in the group, right? So we have three possibilities to deal with, right? And we can set it up that way. We could say Kirk is and Spock isn't, plus Spock is and Kirk isn't, which would be the exact same number, uh, plus um, neither of them, right? All right, what's the only other possibility? So we've got Kirk's is, Spock is, and Spock is, Kirk is, and they're both not. The only other possibility is what? They both of them are. So what if we took the total number of committees and subtracted from that the one where they both were on it, then what are we left with? One of them is, the other one is, or neither of them, right? So you can count up and add three things. <clears throat> it's not terrifically long. Right? But it's, it's more tedious than it needs to be. So how many Kirks and Spocks are there? And two, and we want both of them. Do we care what order? No. So 2C2. Two so this is the committees where both of them are on it. What's left? How many people are left? 12, 3, right? First two numbers add to 14, last two numbers add to 5, right? That's our 14 and 5. Yeah, when you write the C's next to each other, you're multiplying. And that works out to 1782. <coughs> Excuse me, which is the exact same number you get with uh, adding up the three, you know, one is and the other one is and so on. Standard deck of cards. Woohoo, cards. Practical math, right? It's like, it took 12 years to finally have something practical. We're going to learn how cards. This would all lead to, so. This, um, this stuff probably falls into something called counting methods as well, right? Like we're counting how many ways you can get exactly three red cards. So everybody familiar with the deck of cards? Four suits, spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds. Uh, spades, clubs are black, hearts and diamonds are red. Each suit consists of 13 cards, well it's ranks, they're called ranks. Nine numbered cards, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and oh. Apparently the ace isn't numbered, but okay. So number cards: two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The ace, which is generally counted as one, and three face cards: a jack, a queen, and a king. Determine the number of different five-card poker hands that can be drawn from a deck of cards if, if in each hand there are or is exactly three red cards. So how many red cards are there from which to choose? Twenty-six. How many of those do we want? How many black cards are there? And how many of those do we want? Okay. So if you have exactly three red cards, then you must have exactly two black cards. <clears throat> okay, and that works out to 845,000. All black cards. How many ways are you getting all black cards? 26 C5, okay, or 26 5. <clears throat> you could, if you wanted, put 26 2 0, 
after that, just to account, right, then your top number. See, what do my top numbers add to? 52. Bottom add to 5, right? So I'm going to do 5. You don't need those. <clears throat> You're not likely to see it in a distractor. <clears throat> you know, they would just stop with this. They wouldn't put that in. So 26C5, the all blacks, is 65,780. All face cards. <clears throat> How many face cards are there? 12. How many do we want? 5. 12 choose 5 is 792. You could if you wanted, and this is starting to get really weird, but you, you could put 40 choose 0. Right? Like it's, it, it's not so bad when it's like the 26, because you say these are red, these are black, but non-face cards is not sort of an obvious number in a deck of cards. Right? Like 26 red, 26 black, sure. Okay, 13 diamonds, 13 clubs, yeah. At least one king. How many kings if you get at least one? At least one. Tell me, what are all the possibilities? One, one king, or two kings, or three kings, or four kings. So, at least one. One k, one k, or two k, or three k, or four k. Okay, so I could count those all up, but what don't we have? We don't have no kings. So we, what we want is the total, which is 52 choose 5, minus the ones that have no kings. <laughs> so how many not kings are there in the deck? There are 48 of them, right? How many of those do we need? We need five. We need five non-king cards. Okay. 52 choose five is actually the number of five-card poker heads that are possible. It's like two million blah, blah, blah. Do you know that if you properly shuffle a deck of cards, you know, thoroughly and properly shuffle, that that particular deck as it runs has never appeared before and will never appear again? Okay. It's crazy. It's crazy. What's the number of ways that you can order a deck of cards? So how many choices for the first card? 52. Then? Then? So what is this? 52 factorial, right? There are 52 factorial ways to order. What's 52? Somebody's now punching 52 factorial in. What's 52 factorial? Yeah, 8 times 10 to the 67. 10 to the 9th is a billion. 10 to the 67th is like unimaginably large. So, right, when you shuffle a deck of cards, that's the first time that's happened, and it's the last time it's going to happen, right? Likely. I mean, it is still possible, yes. If you set a computer to just say, Start generating hands of cards, or sorry, not generating, start shuffling the deck and give me a shuffled list and let me know when you hit one that's the same, right? And if it could do, I don't know, it could do a million a second, a million is just 10 to the 6, so you got 10 to the 61 seconds now, that's longer than the universe is probably going to be around, so, right? Pretty weird, huh? Well, just 52 standard deck of cards there. I shuffle that. It's never never happened before, and it'll never happen again. <laughs> it's not really lucky. It's just, well, as, as long as you do more than 8 point whatever times 10 to the 67, you will then have to hit one hand that you've already dealt. <clears throat> it's only about 2.5 million poker hands, though, so those appear a lot. Okay, so at least... <laughs> At least one king is all minus no kings. This is also at least one jack. This is also at least one queen. This is also at least one ace. This is also at least right. It's at least one of anything. Okay. Two pair. All right, now we're moving into actual real poker hands. <laughs> two pair. So what's two pair, right? It's a pair of one rank, it's like a pair of aces and a pair of kings, which is the two pair you would like to see if you had a five card hand. So, <coughs> here's how we do two pair. We say, how many ranks are there in deck of cards? 
There are 13 ranks, right? Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. If we're going to get two pairs, we need to choose two of those ranks. How many ways can we choose two ranks from a set of 13? 13 C2. We don't care about order, right? I don't care if it's two aces and two kings or two kings and two aces. So we've got 13 choose two, which is choosing which ranks you're going to have, right? 13 choose two isn't that big a number. It's 78, right? You can have an ace and a two, an ace and a three, an ace and a four. You, you could list those fairly easily. Um, once we've done that, we go into the rank. So how many cards are there in any particular rank? <clears throat> four. And how many of them do we need to make a pair? Two. And then we go to the other rank. And how many cards are in that other rank? Four. And how many of them do we need to make a pair? Two. How many cards have we drawn? So sort of leave this out of it for now since cards are like two. So, so we need how many more cards? <clears throat> one. We're limited. How many cards have we got left from which we can draw that one card? Okay, so there were 52 cards. So imagine 52 cards, right? We split it out. Now I have three piles. I have the four cards here in one pile from which I'm going to choose two. I have the four cards from this guy in the other pile from which I'm going to choose two. And then I have what's left. And I have to choose from what's left. So what's left? Or how many are left? So what do these have to add up to? 52. What do these add up to? Eight. So you have 48 cards, right? You can't choose one of these guys. If you do, what do you end up with? Come on, poker people. You end up with three of a kind and two of a kind, which is called? Full house. Oh. Good. I see you're wasting your youth appropriately. <laughs> I played poker all through high school. But. Okay, so the 13 choose two is separate, right? That's saying I need to choose which ranks. So this is choosing the ranks. Once I've done that, this is taking a, the first pair, you know, and the second pair. And this is the last card, right, the fifth card. So the ways that you can get two pair, which is ranked rather low on the scale, right, like it's only above, what's, what's uh, two pair above? Okay, apparently not wasting enough time playing poker. So. <laughs> oh, so what's, what's the order of poker hand? What's the lowest thing? What's the worst hand you can get? High card. Followed by one pair. Followed by two pair, then three of a kind. A straight, a flush, a full house, a straight flush. Yes. Why are they ranked that way? Because it's the, the number of ways they come up, right? <clears throat> so high card is actually about a million in some odd ways. There's only 123,552 hands that are two pair. How many hands are there that are royal flush? Four, because you got four suits. So royal flush, the highest hand in normal poker, is a 10, jack, queen, king, and ace, all of the same suit. So there's only four of them out of the two and a half million possible poker hands. Only four. Okay, four aces. How do we get four aces? Four choose four. What's left? Forty-eight cards left. How many do we need? This is forty-four, by the way. I can't do simple math. Because <coughs> it's fifty-two minus eight. He said, realizing his. It can't be 48s in both of them. That's 44 choose one. Uh, and 4 choose 4 is 1, and 48 choose 1 is 48 plus just 48. <clears throat> 4 of a kind. So that's 4 aces, so what's 4 of a kind? So what do you do with the 48? Multiply it by? 13, right? So you could think of this, if you wanted to, as 13 choose 1. In other words, I'm going to choose which rank I'm going to get 4 of. And that could be done 13 ways. Then I'm going to go into that rank and choose 4 of those cards. And then from the remaining 48 cards, I'm going to choose 1. <clears throat> so it's just 13 times 48. Right? Let's multiply. 
which is 624. There's not that many four of a kinds, right? That's why they're very rare. Very rare means they rank very high. Full house. What's full house? Three, uh, one kind, and two of another. So how are we going to choose which kind we're going to get three of? How many ways can we do that? Thirteen, choose one, right? Thirteen ranks, I'm going to choose one of them. Of those four cards, how many do I need? I need three, right? Four, choose three. So first I'm going to choose which rank am I going to choose from which to get my three cards? How many ranks are left from which to choose to get my two cards? So that's going to be 12, choose one, right? Yeah. So first I say, I, got, I need to choose the rank from which I need to get my uh, three cards, and then I need to choose them. Then I choose the rank from which I get that, and what goes in here? Four, choose two. We got our full hand, we got our full house, we got our full hand, right? Because we got three cards here and two cards here. Okay. This is where you can't just be adding these guys, right? You don't want to do that in this particular case. If you go look up poker hands, you'll see notation that looks like this. There's a Wikipedia page listing poker hands. This is exactly what you're going to see. Right? Like if we looked up two pair, you'd see, if not exactly, they, they could do a 13 choose one, four choose two, and then a 12 choose one, four choose two, like choose the first and then choose the second. And then they could do an 11 choose one, four choose one. Just choose from the 11. It's still going to work out to 44, right? But they could say there's 11 ranks remaining, choose one of those, and then choose one card from it. Um, that's a possibility as well. <clears throat> Determine n if nc2 is 28. <clears throat> what? Oh, is there another? No, no, no. no. You, you didn't miss it. Oh, I just think you did the number. Number of full houses is miscalculated on my keys. 3,744. What time is it? What time is it? Two pair. Okay. And they'd have similar things for four months. Determine n if nc2 is 28, so this would be like algebraically. Okay, so nc2, let's do this. ncr is n factorial over n minus r factorial, r factorial. nc2 then will be n factorial over n minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial, and we want that to equal 28. Okay, so what's the first thing we can do, or what should we do first? Multiply both sides by 2 factorial, which is, how much is 2 factorial? Two. So we get n factorial over n minus 2 factorial is 28 times 2 factorial. Then we expand the larger of n and n minus 2, which is n, and we stop expanding it when it is equal to, or when the expression, the last expression we wrote, is equal to what's on the bottom of the expression, right? So we expand, and when do you stop? Okay, here. So we've got n squared minus n minus 56 is 0. So that's going to be n minus 8 and n plus 7. So n is 8 or n is negative 7. Anybody want to weigh in? Can't be what? Can't be negative, right? Combination. So cross that off. n is 8. Algebraically show that 10c4 is equal to 10c6 and explain why in terms of selection. Okay, so 10c4 <clears throat> is 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial, 4 factorial, which is 10 factorial over 6 factorial, 4 factorial. I'm going to stop there. I need to do 10c6, which is 10 factorial over 10 minus 6 factorial, 6 factorial, which is 10 factorial over 4 factorial, 6 factorial. Say, hey, they're the same. Why are they the same? So imagine this, 10c4, right? It's choose 10c4 is choose four objects from a set of 10. Okay, so I have 10 people here, right? 
I'm going to choose, well, choose that. So, okay, 10 people here. I'm going to choose four of you. I need four of you to go down to the business office and pick up some books. Okay? <clears throat> so, 10C4 is I've chosen four of you to go get books. What have I done with the remaining six of you? I've chosen you to stay here. So I could just as equally say, okay, there's 10 people. I'm going to choose six of you to stay here, and four of you to go down there, right? So for every way that I choose the four people to go, I'm choosing six people to stay. And that's why 10C4 is the same as 10C6. Okay? Five points lie in a circle. To remember, straight lines can be drawn using any two of the points. So you got one, two. So how many points do I need to make a straight line? Two. How many points from which do choose do I have? That's really... Okay, it's 5C2, which is 10. Determine the number of diagonals that could be drawn in a pentagon. So there's a pentagon. How many diagonals can I draw? So what's a diagonal? One corner to another, right? From one vertex to another vertex, right? Like here. So that would still be 5C2, right? Except, wait a second. I mean, there's one diagonal. There's two. There's three. There's four. There's five. I've drawn all the diagonals I can. Well, here's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the problem is, of these guys, five of the number are making up the sides. So we have to subtract off the number of sides. Okay. So it's 5C2. That's joining all points which happens 10 ways, right, which is 10. But five of those are the outside of the pentagon. OK, can we generalize that? A polygon has n sides. Write an expression for the number of diagonals that could be drawn in the polygon. So nc2 minus n, right? This is the size, right, five sides. This is, there are n sides. We don't want to count the sides. They're not diagonals. They're sides. We don't want to take sides. <laughs> Come on, that was decent. <laughs> De <laughs> De <laughs> don't encourage him. Still, it was decent. Determine the number of triangles that could be drawn using any five non-collinear points. What's non-collinear? Not in a straight line. OK, how many points do I need to draw a triangle? Three. Yeah. So it's 5C3. What's 5C3? It's the same as 5C2. Because if I choose U3 to get books, I'm choosing U2 to stay there. So it's just 10. Right. All right. Let's take the chances. Not looking good. Term an N if N plus 2, uh, blah, blah, 21. Okay. <clears throat> N plus 2, choose N is 21. So NCR, N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. What's our N here? N plus 2. So in the formula where we see N, we're writing N plus 2. N plus 2. And what's my R? R is N. So in the formula where we see R, we're going to write N. And that's going to be equal to 21 which is a totally different card game. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's just clean this up a little bit. So we've got n plus 2 factorial. What's n plus 2 minus n? 2. So we're going to get 2 factorial n factorial equals 21. So what do we do? Usual. Multiply both sides by 2 factorial or 2. So n plus 2 factorial over n factorial is 42, right? multiplied by 2. Expand the larger term, which is the n plus 2, times n plus 1, times n, stop there, cross that off. Quadratic, what do we got? n squared plus 3n, n squared plus 3n plus 2 is 42. We have room n squared 
plus 3n minus 40 is 0. n plus 8. n minus 5 is 0. n is negative 8, or n is 5. So what's the answer? 5. Okay. <laughs> what's that? Stop now? No. Let's keep going. Oh, we're not going to finish. You could do this on yeah. You could do this on your calculator. Just go y one is equal to x plus two n c r x. Go into the table, not the graph. Go into the table. Look for twenty one, right? And where you see x, right? That that'll be the value. You'll see it under five, right? So next to five, you'll see because uh, if it's five, it's really seven choose five, right? So 7 choose 5 is 7 times 6 over 2, which is 42 over 2, which is 21. <laughs> All right, one, we'll do one more. This is easy. Ten teams in a basketball league. How many games must be played if each team plays every other team once? So we're just pairing them up, right? So how do we do that? 10C2. What if they played each other home and away? 10P2, right? Because then AB is different from BA, but they're not in this case, right? So like stamps riders is different from riders stamps if they have to play a home and away game, but stamps riders if they play once is just one game. So this is just 10 choose 2, which is 10 times 9 over 2, or 45. All right, so I guess we'll pick up tomorrow doing the right-hand side of the last page.